I was like, yo, that's that's funny because, I mean, you know, me being single, bro, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, wake, I'll wake up moody. I ain't... I ain't got no Bible, no booty sleeping next to me. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm like, damn, man, I just ain't feeling it today. I'm tired of being in this bed by myself. I got all this house. I ain't got no Bible, no booty, no nothing. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still be What's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens. I'm your host, and this is the Run to Play Show, where I help you break down the top plays of success from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and personalities by sharing gems from their playbook. And I'm excited today. I've got a good friend of mine. He's a best-selling author, and he's the host of the table. And ladies, he's single. Uh, y'all give it up for my boy Anthony on this. Yeah, how you feeling, Ayo? Hey, man, I'm good, man. Good hey. to be at the. What, what we calling this? The locker room? What, what the, we calling the, the run and play show, man. Oh, I mean, I know show. it's a run and play oh, yeah, show, yeah, but, but where are we? Yeah. we? We in the run and play locker room, you understand? We so, in the locker room, like yeah, I said. We in the locker room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. Well, listen, man, first of all, I just want to say shout out to you, bro. Like, yeah. I love the impact that you've had yes, um, just on the community, and it's always positive, it's oh, uplifting. Yeah, man. The principles are always in place, which I think is really important. That's one of the things I look for people all the time is like, yeah. How do people operate in different environments but still find a way to keep their principles? That's good. And uh, and you mastered that on, on another level. And uh, man, you just you, you're open book, man. You, you're willing to share and give game, and you live by the things that you teach. Even sometimes, yeah. Financially, we have different philosophies on certain stuff. You be like, yeah, but I'm still doing it like this. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. I respect it. So <laughs> it's always good to see when somebody, just on a personal level, yeah. is also about the same things they talk about. Publicly as they are privately. So I just want to give you flowers on that. Too, I appreciate right? it, man. I really do, man. Absolutely. It feels good to be here in the locker room. There we go. <laughs> so, listen. I ain't even prep you on this because I was like, let's just introduce them to a conversation we be talking about for real. All right. All so, right. listen. I got this text. I'm not going to say the person's name, but this is what it said. Uh -huh. It said, good morning, Justin. I'm interested in meeting Anthony O'Neill. Oh, Jesus. Can you make an introduction, please? I said, uh, hey, sis. I know he's going to ask me what's the purpose of the connection with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> she said... My Bible, brains, and booty. I want to go on a date and get to know him more. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll pass it on. He said, please do so. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but for for not just not just the, the person in question, you know what I'm saying? But like, you said that was <laughs> those are your prerequisites for a wife. Can you can you break down that philosophy for us real quick? I mean, it started off as a joke, but then it really it really did become serious. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean. On, on the serious tip, I really have like five S's when it comes to what I desire within my spouse, right? Yep. Number one, she got to be saved, Bible. Yep. She got to be sweet. She got to be skilled. She got to be smart. And she got to be very sexual. And I think as Christians, we tend to be scared to say like, hey, we want a saved woman who is sexual. Yeah. And right. so I was on the show talking to one of my pastor friends. And he was like, yo, bro, it sounds like you want a girl with the Bible and a booty. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I do like booty. And I do got to have a woman with a Bible. <laughs> and when I say the Bible, it's just that she just has a relationship with God for herself. She believes yeah. in God. Mm -hmm. I ain't looking for no woman to speak in tongues and just run around the church. Yeah. But no, it's like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Look, you believe in God. You believe that he's real. Um, and and you're not ashamed to be like, yo, for my husband, I'm 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 going to wear his behind out. Yeah. Yeah, no, you should. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to be no cheater. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't even want to think about cheating when mm -hmm. I'm married. And um, I was just with my mom and dad, man. And it's so funny. Um, my dad and mom has been together for 31 years. Congratulations. Like, yeah, bro. Shout I, out to them. I was like, yo, what's the secret? And my mom said a lot of sex. Mm -hmm. And my dad said a lot of provision and leadership. Mm, I like that. And it's funny how my mom said sex. Mm -hmm. And my dad said provision and leadership. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My dad didn't say sex. Yeah. My mom didn't say provision and leadership. Mm -hmm. What they understood was my mom said, your dad wants a lot of sex. My dad said, your mom needs provision and leadership. Wow. And so I'm like, yo, that's the, that's the key. So it's like, for me, I need a woman that's like, yo, we're going to work. We're going to serve God, um, and I'm going to give you a lot of sex. And I'm like, yo, we're going to serve God, and I'm going to make sure the home is taken care of, and I'm a one-woman's man. I'm a one woman's man. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about then, that, like, the budget piece. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because okay. I guess that ties into you being able to provide for the future. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is, is through that data piece. And I know you get a lot of flack sometimes for I do. What was it? The $100 budget? Yeah, man, I think, I think, man, I don't care how you are. You know what I'm saying? Me and you are blessed mm -hmm. financially, you know what I'm saying, yep. to 
more than maybe the average uh, employee out there. But I think I'll even tell you this, you know, like, hey, our first date should be no more than fifty two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And really, it's not really about the money. Right. It's about me. I don't know if I like her enough to drop two, three, four hundred dollars on the first date. Correct. I want it on the first day, I don't want the pressure of, oh my gosh, I got to say the right things, do the right things. I want to be able to be myself, her be herself, but then also me show her that I've been listening to what she said. So yeah. prime example, there's this young lady, man, that I was getting to know and she was like, yo, I really enjoy like museums and I mm-hmm. really enjoy uh, just, you know, going around and checking them out. So I said, okay, cool, bro. I got on Groupon. There we go. I got on Groupon and there's this thing to where they take you around the city of Nashville mm-hmm. and it's like 15 bucks. You can get two for 25 And what they do is they send you on a hunt. So you got to go into these museums in Nashville, and you got to find things and then text back the answer. <laughs> then they give you the next clue to where to go. That's tight, actually. Bro, she was like, oh, my gosh. She's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, this is a great experience. And mm-hmm. da, 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 da. She's like, oh, my God, how much was that? It had to be about three, four hundred dollars I was like, nah, mm-hmm. it was $25. <laughs> because I listened to what she said. And mm-hmm. I think for me, it's easy for me to throw money. I have money, so mm-hmm. I can just... I can spend money like that. How you really know a man who has resources, if he really likes you, is by his intentionality. Correct. Does he listen to you? And and will he also imply what you're doing? And to the ladies who say, man, if he doesn't spend this kind of money on me, then he doesn't value me. I'm like, no. I, I, you know how many times I've given ladies just to shut up? Mm-hmm. I've given them money. Hey, just get out of my face. Yeah, facts. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let, me, <laughs> let me just take you on one day, spend <laughs> a lot of money, and I never want to see you again. Yeah. But men value their time more than they value their money who are successful. And if I spend my time scheduling and planning out um, a date that is based around you, your heart's desires, that lets you know that I, that I really value Yeah, that's a fact because it's a lot easier to give money than time. It is. Yeah, a thousand percent. You know, and I, so so let, let's talk about, you know, because, you know, there, there's, there's a talks of high value men, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, I always like to get both sides. Like, anytime I have a lady, like, stuff they're looking for, you know, as a guy, and you touched on this a little bit, but, like, like, I know for me, like, one of the things that would always throw me off was almost like the uh, indirect begging. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you know, like, I, I can already feel it coming. Like, okay, mm-hmm. but you need help with something. Or mm-hmm. almost like you said, um, there's something like people try to make you feel bad for not spending money. Yeah. But I'm like, man, you know, you went with me shooting in the gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, let, we got to work, uh, work our way up to that. Right, because, right, right, right. You know, like, I put it like this. Sometimes a person may look at it like, okay. I'm dating, this is one person, but like, listen, if you're single and you're going on multiple dates, but like now, I'm spending $300 on a date, doing that 10 times a month, that's 3,000 a month, $40,000 a year, Gone. it's not that it's trash, but it's like, what could it have been if it was in my investment account? Absolutely. What could it have been if it was in my brand? You know what I'm saying? So like, what, what are some things, right, let's, let's put it like this, what are some things that are an instant turn off? I mean, for me, any type of woman that comes to me with a financial expectation up front, Mm-hmm. That's an instant turn on. Yeah. Um, any woman that um, is kind of just a little bougie and there's no sweetness, there's no softness to her up front um, is an instant turn off to me. Uh, I'm going to tell you this too, man. Any woman that comes to me and she doesn't present that she could be an asset. Yeah. Is an instant turn off. If everything is your liability, you know, you're bringing stress to my life, you're asking me too many daggone questions. Who is she? What is that? What is this? Mm-hmm. That's an instant turn off. And then another thing to me, man, I, I don't know about you, but for me, I, I don't want to hear you talk negative about any of your exes. Mm, that's a big one. If you always talking negative about all your exes, like they are trash, my baby daddy is this, bro, I, it's an instant. It's so much of an instant turn off, I won't even call you again after that conversation. Wow. Because what if I become an ex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like none of your exes were good? Yeah, yeah, none of like them, none yeah. of your I mean, I get the fact that, you know, that your past relationships are past, mm-hmm. but they're not horrible people. That's somebody's yeah. king and that's somebody's queen, you know, for, for me as a man. And so it's like, I'm not going to talk negative about my past, Mm -hmm. man. I've dated some great ladies. They just weren't my great lady. Correct. That's it, you know? And so, I mean, those are instant to me. But, you know, going back to what you said, man, about, you know, $300 dates, $3,000 a month, $40,000 a year, think about it. 
Why is it that we're okay with men showing up for tryouts, but we're not okay, and we really do start tripping when they can't show up for the finals? Mm -hmm. So for me, I say no to a whole bunch of dates up front financially because when I find my wife, I don't want to tell her I can't do these things because I gave all these girls who end up being friends all my time, all my Mm -hmm. resources, and I wasn't saving, I wasn't investing, I wasn't building for my wife. Yeah, And so I I get a lot of of flack because... Mm -hmm. I'm very intentional about it. Now, let me be real, because I don't want to be capping. First date, I'm being wise. Second date, it's going to be a little bit more. Yeah. And eventually, as I see this is something, the money will go up from there. But in the very beginning, I'm also got to be wise. Like, all right, cool. One date, is not. it's not wise for me to drop $500 on you. I had a millionaire friend of mine. He's worth about $300 million. And when he first met his wife, he was worth about maybe $25 million. First date was about $62, he said. Mm. Second date was about... $88, he said. And then a third debt, third date, it was about $100 or more. He said up until they got married, none of their dates cost him no more than 150 bucks. Wow. But the day he got married, he built and bought her her house, her dream home, bought her her dream car. They went on a vacation, a honeymoon for three months, bro. Wow. Three months. Hmm. But leading up to that, the most expensive date she had was like 150 bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's yeah. more important? Yeah, no, I agree, and I think I think sometimes in today's world it's unfortunate, but you know sometimes you got to look at it from a standpoint of like, all right, did, is it really about the data? Or is it about the picture you're trying to put on the gram? That's it, or, or the, the IG clip you're trying to put on the gram. And yep. I think you know guys got to be smart too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I, I truly believe like you find somebody you want to invest into them. Do what you got to do. Yes, but at the same time you do have to be smart because not everybody has the same motives. Right. I know some people that that's their intention is like, yo, right now I'm in a season having fun and hey, if you want to entertain me, cool. And I'm like, yo, if you're in that season, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. But if you're not in that season, you gotta be smart. You know, you know, they, they take advantage of people. I'm in the season of the Bible and the booty. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, and Bible is really important, man. I the reason I feel like it is for me personally is like I feel like if we have a disagreement. Something has to supersede how we both feel, mm. and so it's like, all right, you know, if I'm wrong or you wrong, let's let's go to this right here, and let's right. just see who's right. right. And whoever this says right, right, let that that's how we solve this. Or it might be, hey, we look at this and we both wrong, and it's like this this is right, and right. it's it just gives you a third party, yeah, right. That that should be a nice little validation piece. So I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. While we're talking about relationships, not just business relationships, I think I mean not just uh, like. Uh, Dating relationships, but like, let's talk about business relationships. Yeah. To me, that's one of my things I think more people need to spend time on, learning how to properly mm-hmm. develop business relationships. Because there are some people that I meet, I'm sure people you meet, that you can tell right off the rip. It's like, okay, what do they want? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or I've seen some people in business, sometimes they don't know how to handle business relationships long term. They don't. So I'm like, okay, you you don't get it. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. You, you, I, I sent you 50 people. You, you're you not supposed to charge me like that. You understand? So, like, what, what are some things that you've done yourself? Because you've got a great network of business relationships and stuff as well that you've done to maintain and build relationships. Yeah, yeah man. And, and, you know, I want to start off by saying this, man. I think you're one of the kings in that space because you know how to maintain um, all of your business relationships. And you know how to move in different circles, yeah. which is one thing I love about you. You can be in this circle, that circle, and these are completely different <laughs> circles. You know? I was like, dang, how did Justin do that? Like, <laughs> kind of reminds me of me. So I was mm-hmm. want to give you your love and your props, man, up front, bro, because you, this guy right here is, you, you, you need to be teaching that, um, especially here so. um, at the Running Play Show. But that's a play that everyone needs to know because I firmly do believe that the caliber of your future is depending upon the caliber of the relationships you have around you. Yeah. Everyone's chasing after the bag, but you should be chasing after the relationships that can bring you a bigger and more stable bag. For sure, absolutely. You know? And so for me, I've always looked at every relationship like not what can they do for me, but what can I bring of value to them? Yeah. And if I can't bring value to them, that's not gonna be a relationship that's gonna last long. Correct. And so those kind of relationships tend to be like, all right, cool, let me pay you for your mentorship Mm -hmm. because I can't bring value to you. Correct. But then if there is value in exchange, I'm all right, cool, bet. This 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 is a business relationship. But I think also too, you got to understand there's a difference between a business relationship than a friendship. Correct. And you got to make sure you don't mix the two. That's my friend, (laughs) and I love you. But then on the business side, hey. How do we benefit each other? Correct. Yeah, and absolutely. you just can't cross the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I think that's important there. And I appreciate too everything you just said because yeah. it's, it's, it's so important. I think it, there's another level too when you get into it where it's like 
Now you got a mentor that's mm-hmm. also a friend. Mm-hmm. And it's like, then when you get to that point, it's like, Ooh. I can't cross. Now how do I how do I play the line of like, oh, right now we're friends. Yeah, yeah. But in this environment now, you're you're the mentor, and so yeah. I, I've yeah. got to I got to still be a student. And I think people like what's that song? It's like blurred lines. Like people just they they blur the lines, and sometimes people forget. It's like okay, cool. We we cool. Yep. But uh, <laughs> let let's let's not forget. And I think that's something that I always try to remember. Is like okay. Everybody's a master of something. Yes, and you you got to stay a student. But the relationships are are the key. And I think sometimes you go in too too hard for a relationship. Yeah, you'll blow it. Blow because it because you you it's like you thirst. And I think that's especially for my young entrepreneurs or people that's new to the game. It's like your need is so high at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like so you're saying I don't have a lot, but you want me to give more. Yes, it's like yeah, that's that's how it works. But but here's the thing: your lot is not a lot for real. Fact. It's just a lot to you based on where you are today. Yeah. yeah. But like eventually you'll look back and be like, oh, that really wasn't that much. It really wasn't. But it, it goes back to the same thing that you just said about dating, relationship wise, is let's see what's really there. That's it. <laughs> it's that's it's the same philosophy. It's like okay, let me let me see what's here. Let me see how this person is sewing in. Let me see how this person is you know willing to pour. And I always teach people is like when it comes to uh, you know like mentorship, you either buy your way or you serve your way in. Absolutely. And I do that at events. I go to somebody's event. I'm, I buy the ticket. Buy the ticket. Yep. Hey, I buy the ticket. Hey, I buy your course. I do whatever because I also want you to see. It's so easy to see that people are trying to take. So it's like it's it's easy for you to see who's trying to who's trying to give. All right. Absolutely. So check this out. I always had this conversation with my friends. And ladies, don't get mad at me for this. Uh oh. Like, <laughs> I feel like I can, and I could be wrong. I feel like ladies a lot of times have better friendship with guys. I've seen ladies stay friends with ladies, but it's always like little, little something. So, but 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 if I see ladies like fall out, a lot of times it's typically it has to do something relationship wise, like a guy or something like that. Yes, sir. Just just from the people I've dated or friends yeah. that I have. Yeah. When you. When you see guys that eventually, like, sometimes they just don't get it, what do you feel like it's based off of? When they just don't get, like, the when relationship? They, yeah, like, or, no, like, like, let's just say, like, guys, they cool, they fall out. What do you what, what do you think a lot of times it ends up coming down to? What I've seen from brothers mm-hmm. was they were intimidated by my success. Yeah. It was like, oh, he getting a bag, and he ain't teaching me how to get a bag. Mm-hmm. Or, or he got that. And, and I've never seen any brothers fall out over another woman. Yeah. That's I've just never seen yeah. it, but I've always seen brothers fall out. He just started his business. He got the bag. Um, his career is doing well, and I think it, it comes back to our pride, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you know, we're scared to ask, mm-hmm. bro. How did you do that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and you share a good friend, Darius Daniels, and I've known Darius Daniels for years, yeah. man. And I'll never forget when I first heard Darius Daniels preach. I said, I want to preach like that guy. And I literally walked up to him and said, yo, what I got to do to learn? Mm-hmm. I didn't go up to him as no friend. I said, hey, sir, you you can bring value to me. And I just started serving him, going to hear him. I, I mean, whatever whatever I could do to be around him, I did that. Me serving him there and never asking for much, never trying to take, led me and him to have a great friendship. Correct. To where now we have a great friendship and we have a great business relationship. Mm-hmm. He's still the best preacher in his world. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, fine. but it's like, at the end of the day, it's... It's when a relationship is healthy, I always look at all my friends around me like, all right, cool. Are, are you emotionally secure in yourself? Are you um, secure in who you are as a man? Because I'm going to elevate. Mm-hmm. And you can't be around me and be hating on me if I'm going to elevate. Because if you elevate, I'm winning. Like I'm, I'm like, yo, let's go. Because if you can do it, I'm like, I can do it. Yeah, not for sure. That's you how know? it should be. That's yeah. how it should be. Yeah. And I think, what's that, what's that, the, it's like a little saying I saw on Instagram or social media somewhere, it was like, don't, don't be, like, don't be afraid to clap for your friends if their dreams take off before yours do. Yeah, and I think what you said is just the truth. It's like, it's just proof that, literally for me, it's like, that's the closest proof. Yes. Because like, some other people, I may not know their story, but yeah. this dude. Right, no, I no. know him. Like, I grew up with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 y'all don't understand. I, uh, listen, no, no, no. Right, right. I, he still spent the same on dates that he did. You know, like it's just like okay, this this goes way back. And I, for me, when I found the right mentorship, it was like mm. it was an example of all right, man. If this person can do it, yes, the way that they are, it's just it's just further proof. So yeah, I always wondered that just about men and women because I'd be like, ladies, I'd be like, sometimes y'all just be. Y'all know how to let go of stuff sometimes. And I, here we tripping me out when the woman is winning with the bad let go, girl, yeah. go. But then when it's another dude, like, Ugh. right? I'm like, yo, what the. But really, yeah. over a man? Yeah. Come on now. It, it always comes, and it's like, I, and I feel like 
there there has to be a level of maturity that comes with it because it's like for me like especially in Atlanta it's like you probably going to run across somebody that's somebody you know that's somebody's day you just, and it's just like okay you know that, that's why I'm not in Atlanta <laughs> 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 so, so that, that goes by this. How how hard is it dating at this point oh, in hard. today's world? It's hard, bro. Yeah. Well, 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 well. No, I'm gonna say this. Let me say it's the first time I ever said this. I don't think it's hard. I think, I think for me, it's just about I gotta make up my mind. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because let's just be real. There's more of them than it is of us. Correct. And then this is not an arrogant statement. This is a this is a real statement. I'm young, successful, no kids. Mm-hmm. And the options are there. I have to be like, all right, cool. I have to be willing to open up my heart and give a woman the opportunity to hurt me. Mm. And my biggest fear at this level of where I'm at is I will open my heart up to the wrong woman and she will hurt me. Mm. And so when I say it's hard, it's hard for me to open up, but it's not hard to find a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's not. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely harder to be vulnerable. I know for me, it came down. So like when I was younger, it was it was definitely a girl that broke my heart, mm. and it made me like, okay, you know what? I ain't never gonna let that happen again. You know, it really, for real, I'm Bro. actually glad for that situation. It changed the whole Justin that people see today. It made me like, fuck it, I'm about to go ahead and do do what I got to do. Right. But <laughs> I said, okay, you know, Jay, there are some things that you know, like sometimes you start dating, you be like, okay, okay, maybe that's me. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. me because it keep yeah. coming up. So all right, that's that's just the thing. Yeah. Right? And and a lot of it comes back to me being comfortable enough and vulnerable enough to open up right but it is choosing the right person to open up with absolutely you know so what so what are your thoughts on that do you feel like that comes from the past or you feel like that's just man i'll tell you man you know i had a young lady she hurt my she hurt me hard bro because i i i was hurt when i got um when i broke up my ex-fiance mm-hmm. a few years ago and then within the last year or so ago i dated this beautiful chick bro and i was like all right man oh my home girl sarah jakes she said, man, you got to be vulnerable. You got to open up mm-hmm. if you're really going to be successful in relationships. So I met this chick. I was vulnerable. I was open up to her. And I said, listen, I'm moving with intentionality. I'm, I'm coming after you. Um, I'm not dating no one else. I'm going to be serious about you. Man, she looked at me and she said, you're insecure. She said, you are um, mind controlling. Um, you are controlling because I told her I was coming after her and mm-hmm. tell the mother like hey listen go mm-hmm. and when she did that bro it it hurt me because I was like dang when I was trying to do right I still got that mm-hmm. when I was doing wrong I really wasn't winning and I'm like so as men how do we win like how when and where how do we win so like for me I'm like eh. so I had, I, had, I had to literally talk to my therapist about it bro, mm-hmm. because I was like what do I do? How do I play this game? And she said, hey, that's going to happen again probably. Mm-hmm. You just have to accept the fact that you're not for everyone. And the right woman would cherish that. She will, she will protect it uh, because she understands you and your value. And there are some ladies, unfortunately, who were hurt by other guys. Mm-hmm. And they're going to bring that back into the relationship. And you got to understand that she's not saying that to you. She's saying that to all the guys who hurt her in the past. Correct. Yep. Yep. And that's how a lot of people enter the dating world. That's why like, as, as people get older... It's like they have, like, you know, if he ain't doing this, I ain't doing it. I'm like, okay, well, ma'am, I, you know, I don't know you yet. <laughs> so I, I apologize if I can't give you exact, it, this, 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 this day one because the truth is I, just truth. Don't, I don't know you. And so, like, and I and I will say this. As people, as you get a little older in life, you'll start saying, like, I ain't wasting no time and this and this. I'm like, well, don't bring that to the table because right. you, if I bring that that energy to now uh, Anthony, that's like, okay, I'm potentially ready, right. but I'm not going to rush it. Right. Right. That 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 that'll throw off that'll throw off some of the game. Absolutely, so, man. All right. And so, I don't want to rush nothing. Yeah, no, no. He's got to, everything. Everything has to be authentic. Yeah. And it has to be with patience. It's got to, it's got to be because listen, bro. It's marriages. Let me tell you. I can tell you from experience. It's a lot easier to get into than get out of. Right. Oh, and, I, oh, <laughs> and I say, listen. And I, man, listen. And I, it's expensive to get out. Oh yeah, very, very, very expensive. But I think you know at the same time I think it's due. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you if you, if you take part from somebody's life and vice versa, there's there should be something that's there. Because yeah. that's not the way it's supposed to be. Right. You know, I, and I know that. You know, I, like my parents, they've been married to 40 something years. Wow. Aunt, uncle, 40 something years. Like my whole family. Married. I think my grandparents, when they when they passed, they were married 60 or 70 something years. So it's like, it's a long yeah. track record of being married for a long time. And I feel like, uh, you know, and I, what I learned from them was just like, man, 
you're going to have to go through some stuff. Yep. Y- y'all seek through it together, you- you'll be okay. Yep. But I think it's it's being able to find the person that you can do that with yep. and, and be willing to grow. So, I, yeah, man, I, like, I appreciate that, uh, that level of vulnerability. Yes, sir. You know, we've all been told that your net work equals your net worth. And in all my years in entrepreneurship, I've never seen anybody really teach it. You know, a lot of times people look at me and they look at my circle of friends, they look at my circle of mentors, they look at the people that I'm around. They're like, man, how did you go about building that network? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a skill set that has to be developed. And I literally put something together to teach you how to be able to make the climb as an entrepreneur, as a leader, or someone that's just trying to grow in their influence. Somebody that wants to grow their, their community, their leadership, their income, their mindset, or their brand. Check the link in the description so you get access to that course and start learning the skills necessary today. How do I attract the people, grab the influence, and grow my brand, scale my personality so I can get the results that I want? All of that's there. Click the link in the description for more details and get access to it today. And you talk about something that I think is important today, too, is therapy. You yes. know, I think um, mental health is something that's really big. Um, shout out to our sister, Michelle Williams, because yes. she talks about it all the time. All the time. Bro, this is an interesting conversation. It don't go together, but I, I literally just read this, this the other day, and I want to get your thoughts on it because I believe it goes with mental health. Mm-hmm. So check this out. I said that I was looking this up because you know it's been a lot of mass shootings. Yep. Shout out, you know, to all the people that's had some challenges. We we're you know keeping you on our prayers. But check this out. It says the mass shootings in the United States between 1982 and October 2022 by shooters gender. I really wanted to know this. Of the mass shootings in the United States, 129 of them were male, three of them were female, and two of them were male and female. So I'm thinking, why are most of them, by a large majority, men? And what do you think that goes to when it comes to mental health and a lot of things that we talk about? No, the shooting part, I don't really know, man. But I definitely will say this, though. Men, we have a hard time with being vulnerable and opening up and talking about what's really bothering Correct. us. Correct. That's what, that's what I'm thinking, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we, we, it's, and I think society has taught us we got to be a man. Mm-hmm. Society has taught us we can't cry. Society mm-hmm. has taught us that we cannot be vulnerable. Um, and when men are vulnerable, they're met with opposition. Like, no, nah, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Man, man up. Rather than saying, you know what, let's talk about it. Yeah. And and I've been met with that with other ladies. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, why are you getting emotional about that? You're soft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gay. And I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 mm-hmm. whoa. I mean, and so for me, therapy um, and mental health has, I actually invest more into my mind um, as far as in therapy. I just hired a life coach. Nice. Um, and I invest more into those two things than I actually do into actually physically working out. Yeah. Because it's like, why have all this looking good if this is not healthy? Correct. You know? Yeah. And so since I've hired my therapist, I um, mean, since I've hired my life coach, and I'm telling you, I think differently, I process differently, I even move differently. And some someone said, Man, you got this different, you got this different, you know, vibe with mm-hmm. you. I was like, what you mean? To say like, it's not an arrogant vibe, but then it's not a soft vibe it's like a you you just know who you are right yeah and it's because it's like man for me mentally this is my greatest asset i tell everyone to mind your business because your mind is a business that's a bar so it's like you know i'm saying if this is my greatest business my greatest asset my show is not my greatest asset my car is not my greatest asset my investment is not my greatest asset this is it, as long as I take care of this, I'll always make money. I'll always make at least the best decision at that time. But if I don't take care of this, if I don't understand this mind, my business, then I can't grow nothing. And so ever since I've been in therapy, bro, I cry in therapy. Mm-hmm. I cuss in therapy. Mm-hmm. I scream in therapy to this day. Um, and when I get on the phone with my life coach, you know, she gives me homework, and I do the homework assignments Yeah, because this – is the greatest tool that I would ever have in my life. Yeah, no, I love that, and I, I think that's you. You hit on the head what I, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. It, it has to do with like you know, it's like people like be a man. It's like, but is that really being a man? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like you know, and again, I you know, y'all know my my I have a very strong spiritual you know belief, but I like when yeah. I look at like Jesus or really any main character in any religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all have a similar temperament. They do. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, it wasn't it wasn't a hey, I'm gonna slap you back. You slapped yep. me. It wasn't, yep. you know, it was like, hey, no, I'm I wash your feet. Yeah, yeah. I'll hey, turn you know what? Cheek. You know, I I know I can say this person, but I'm gonna cry with you because you crying. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I I'm 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 reading through a lot of these the, the stories in the Bible. So okay, how can I apply those characteristics mm, mm, into Justin? Mm. Because it it can help to de-escalate some situations, right. you know, potentially. Um, and you know, so that, that was that was just something that was that was just interesting. Cause it's always something I'm thinking about. We just had, mm. you know, something not too long ago in Atlanta with some kids, and I'm like, man, we got to start teaching even like the kids, like how do we handle conflict? Yes. How do we handle? How do we talk through situations that we may be frustrated about? Um, so you know, things don't necessarily have to have to lead there. We do. So I, I, I'll, I'll make a transition into the business space, but I want to talk one more thing about relationships. Yeah. There are times in some seasons where relationships have to end, business deals have to end, um, and new beginnings have to start. What have you learned from your experience, even when it comes to endings and any type of relationship that have allowed you to be able to move forward that maybe somebody else can can apply? Maybe they're going through that season right now. Uh, Two main things, man. How you transition out of the old into the new is very pivotal and important. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And I will be honest to say that I have not done that correctly like when it comes to um ending relationships as in like dating relationships mm-hmm. and i was always figuring out something my life coach said she said well did you tell her why you was transitioning on or why you was moving on no why not to I, I ain't got no obligation to her she's like you don't have an obligation to her but as a man you have an obligation to at least leave correctly mm-hmm. And she was like, and that's probably why your new stuff is not working correctly because you're not ending the past correctly. Mm. And now the past is still following you into that because you haven't corrected how you transition from a, you know, a dating situation. And so now what I am learning, man, is just to be uh, very honest with my feelings up front and be very honest with, hey, this is not working out. Yeah. Um, and, and those are hard conversations because when you say that, well, what happened? Or mm-hmm. what's going on? Or not? Then they start blaming you for things. Correct. And then you got to be mature enough to be like, y'all understand how you feeling? Sorry you feel that way. Um, and I still stand on where I stand. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like for me, dude, I, I think how we end not just personal relationships, but even business relationships. Yeah, for sure. You know? Absolutely. Um, I did a huge transition out of um, an amazing organization almost two years ago now, mm-hmm. and me and the CEO of that that company, I say his name, Dave Ramsey, uh, the transition was great. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it, it was a mutual understanding. It was mutual love. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been back there since I've I've left to support like the documentary that they put out. Mm-hmm. I've had a, um, one of their personalities on the show, but it was because the transition of me leaving uh, the company was peaceful, was respectful, and it was cordial. There's no hard feelings there. Correct. And I think that's important. That transitioning doesn't have to be bad. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. And I, I think I think it takes maturity on both people's Absolutely. part Absolutely. for it to not be bad. Because there's some people that's like, well, you know, I'm like, at some point, people are probably going to leave. You have to. But like sports, I mean, somebody may, okay, LeBron left this year. Well, guys, he was going to have to leave at some point. Absolutely. You know, and it's like in business, I feel like sometimes people feel like, okay, well, Anthony going to do his thing is taking away from my thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, no, I've got to be mature enough to say, okay, you know what, man, Anthony is mm-hmm. going at it, man, maybe maybe I should even support that or help that. Damn. And then some people is like, nope, lawsuit, nope, I'm trying to take, no, I'm trying to hurt. And I, I come from a business where people do that. I'm like, to me, I think that's the dumbest thing. Right. And, and one of the reasons I believe that Jim Rohn has this thing, he said, one of the worst things you can do is to be removed from the testimonial of one of your mentees. Ooh. Because if I if I leave you the right way, Ooh, you still share it. You still absolutely. share the principles. You still sh- share the, the things that you learn. Mm. But if we don't leave the right way, now it turns into, I learned in the past. This is what somebody taught me. Taught me, and it's like, dang, I, h- how do I make sure that I'm not removed from the testimonial? Ooh, bro. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> and I was starting to go there. Yeah. And I was like, man, I can say Dave's name. Yeah. Because like, he he was a positive role model in my life. Yeah. Uh, the season just came to an end. Mm-hmm. But he's an amazing guy with an amazing excitement on his life from God, and he's helped millions of people get out of debt. And I was like, yo, cool. We just saw things a little differently. Um, and he was like, yo, I like what you see. Just go do that. Yeah. And, and was like, cool, great. Uh, but, yeah, I, I could never remove Dave Ramsey from my testimony. Yeah, yeah, no, he's always going to be there. Yeah. And every time I talk to you, there's always been positive stuff. God, that's my guy. You know about it. And I think, again, that goes back to what we was talking about with dating. It's like, man, if, 
at, at a certain point, it's like, man, if every business situation you've been in is bad and it's all on them, man, you know, you've been doing this for twenty years, doc. It might, it might be you. Listen, and I've had some, <laughs> and I've had some bad relationships. Yeah, but the world will never know. Yeah. Who they are. Correct. Because just because our relationship wasn't the best mm-hmm. doesn't mean that her next one won't be the best. Correct, yeah. And I don't wanna I don't wanna stop her from finding her love life mm-hmm. because our love life wasn't good. I don't wanna stop this person from having a great business experience because I decided to not just I mean, I've I've left several jobs and opportunities in the past. So I just don't believe in talking negative about other people, um, because it's like at the end of the day, you know, heck. It may be positive and a great thing for you. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't my great thing. Yeah, no, yeah, I love that. I love that, man. It's... The 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 uh, economy right now. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times people are stressing. I know you teach a lot about money. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you could give maybe you know a couple tips about, I mean, if you want to get five or less, whatever, just just money management tips that you feel like could really help people, um, not just through this season but any season. What would, what would that be? I think right now, man, the number one management tip that I'm telling people is. Uh, Watch the amount of debt that you're bringing on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't believe in any debt actually outside of a, a mortgage. But right now, with inflation being high, jobs are coming down. We just saw Amazon cut 10,000 jobs yeah, just yeah. a few weeks ago, right? So the tech industry is is a little iffy right now. Um, and so my thing is just be wise with how you're spending your money mm-hmm. uh, because inflation is going up. Uh, we just saw the tax brackets just change a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. And so we're seeing that the government is trying to make some cushion. But we got to make cushion at home. Yeah. So don't sure. rely on the White House. Worry about your house. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I live way below my means. So that's number one. Just just stop taking on debt. Number two, um, I'm going to say, man, right now is a great time. During a recession, during inflation times, right now is a good time to start looking into side businesses. Uh, I would say per- more so either in the tech space or in the content creation space right so in the content creation space like what you're doing right now a youtube show a podcast um blogs um tiktok ig reels mm-hmm. um right now that industry is estimated you was at the same conference with yeah. me it's gonna be worth about 22 billion dollars yeah here within the next year and right now it's only worth about i think like two to three billion yeah so it's like yo we only need one million of that billion, <laughs> yeah, and so to get a bit to get a million, you only need two thousand people to give you five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And so if you can really produce content that is life transformation, someone will gladly reward you with five hundred dollars to help them transform their life. I agree. And yeah. so if in this economic time, this is not a time to get scared. This is a time to get creative, buckle down, and say, you know what? What can I bring to the system? What can I bring into this world that brings value to people's lives Mm -hmm. and really maximize on the opportunity? Don't worry about the blue check mark on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You just get you need to serve two thousand people. Yep. That's willing to give you five hundred dollars. Yep. And you got a million dollars. Yeah. And I really want people to think about it. The average person in America makes forty eight thousand dollars a year. The average household family makes about sixty eight thousand dollars a year. So that means it's going to take them about twelve years to make a million. You can make a million in one year. If you just really buckle down and focus. Wow. Yeah, that's that's huge, bro. I appreciate it. Those those are those are good tips. I'm taking it into account too, because I'm like, man, if you get these billion dollar corporations and stuff like that making cuts, uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying you have to cut, but it's like but but what they're saying is what they're saying is, hey man, expenses are high. Absolutely. We we gotta make some changes and so as a person, I'm like, okay, what are some areas of my personal life I need yes. to make some cuts? Absolutely. Now, check this out. Here's something I always teach people, too. And it's, it's a tough situation to have, a conversation to have with people until you become a business owner. Is like, you just, once you really start understanding business, you you understand where you sit in the world as an employee. And I'm not mm. knocking a job, because I think it's a very great place. But mm. check this out. Check this out, Anthony. Look, you know on the balance sheet for your company, uh, payroll is on the expense side. Absolutely. But as an employee, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in the asset column. Absolutely. So so what happens is if I feel like I'm an asset to a corporation, but when they're looking at the overall thing, it's like, hey, man, if we want to save money. You're an expense. We, you're an expense. And so that's why anytime you see a company going through something, the first thing they cut is people. Yes. Why? Because they're the, typically the highest expense. Yes. But it, uh, it shows us two things. One, you should, invo- you should invest the most of your money into your people. Yes. The other side is the, the opposite side of that is, man, I'm valuable, but I can also easily flip to yes. now I'm an expense. Yes. And that's why, like you said, starting something part-time, having a business, to. investing into your skills. So for me, it's like, okay, I may not go buy a brand new 
you know, something crazy, car, something like that right now. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Justin's still investing. Yeah. Uh -huh. We we got studio, we doing other stuff, and it was money that a lot of that stuff costs, and you're Ooh. investing a whole bunch of stuff into a lot of this stuff. I see. It. But I'm still spending, but just on a different mentality. It, if I'm spending money now, it has to be something that is going to have the ability to return something return something to me. Yeah, man, you need assets in your life right now. Yeah. You need assets, you need passive income, and you need income. Yeah. And the greatest asset that you can create is yourself. Yeah. How can you turn you into a money machine? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm on your show right now, but my show is making money my, while you and I are talking. Yeah. If you don't go to work, you're not making money. Correct. You mm -hmm. know? And so my thing is, how can you sit back, look at, okay, what is missing, um, and what can I bring to the conversation that is missing. Yep, I agree. And if you can figure out what's missing and how you can add your spin to uh, whatever's missing and then go in, man, you're sitting on a million dollars. Yeah, for sure. Thousand percent. Check this out, because you you have uh, recently launched something I think is brilliant, where you help people you know, launch their brands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you've done a great job of building community and, and uh, things of that nature. What are some tips you would give people in, in terms of building a brand, starting a brand? If I'm looking at this, like, okay, man, all right, I want to do it. How, how do I start? Man, I think the number one thing is you got to sit down, study what you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. like, what, where do you want to go? How do you want to accomplish it? And there's one key thing that I found out from people who have a horrible brand to an average brand to a subpar brand. Okay. And it's they don't allow their moments, their moods to impact their moments. Mm. So they don't allow their emotions to impact the opportunity to excel in their business. Yeah. You know, you're going through a divorce or uh, you had a bad day or you just got into an argument with your parents or you felt off. And so because you felt off or because you feel like this, you don't provide excellence in your business within yeah. your brand. Yeah. And so all the top level brands that I studied, I studied about 122 of them. And these are all people like you and I who've built at least an eight to nine figure business off of just their brand. Mm -hmm. And one thing that was very, very common is they said, man, they get up every single day, no matter what's going on in their life, and they bust their butts. Yeah. And one guy said, man, I was going through a bad divorce and I still had a team of about 22 people. Mm -hmm. And I still had to show up and run the business with yeah. excellence. Mm -hmm. But I still went home and cried. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, I didn't allow my mood to impact my moments. And I was like, yo, that's, that's funny because I mean, you know, me being single, bro, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll wake I'll wake up moody. I ain't I ain't got no Bible, no booty sleeping next to me, you know what I'm saying? And and I'm like, dang, man, I just ain't feeling it today. I'm tired of being in this bed by myself. I got all this house. I ain't got no Bible, no booty, no nothing. Yeah. And I would show up with a little attitude on that day with my team, and and I just, I realized from them, it's like, yo, dude, that could be preventing you because if, if your team knows you're going to, they don't know, if your team doesn't know how you're going to show up, yeah. then they don't know how they're gonna show up. Yep. And then if they don't know how they're gonna show up, then they're not gonna work as hard. Yeah. And you need to be consistent. He was like, you ain't gotta be perfect, but you gotta be consistent that when you show up, you're smiling, you're, you're grateful, you're joyful, you're encouraging, you're leading, you're setting the example. So that when you do have a bad day, your team can cover you on the bad day. Mm -hmm. But if every single day you come in rocky moody, then your team don't come in like that and your company can't grow. And so I would tell people for, from a personal brand perspective, study what you want to study. And then let's say for an example, let's say you want to talk about leadership. Well, mm -hmm. Justin's already talking about leadership. That's cool, great. Justin can't reach everybody. Yeah, for sure. There's billions of people. There's millions of people in this world. Justin can't reach everyone. Mm -hmm. And not everyone's going to listen to Justin. Yeah. I, I talk about money. Not everyone's going to listen to me. Yeah. You got Earn Your Leisure. You got Dave Ramsey. You got Budget Insta. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, what? just look at what can you bring to the conversation that is missing. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And if you can do that, Millions, yeah, millions, man. And I and I'm speaking from experience. Like, um, a lot of people don't like my message, you know, because I teach no debt, and I get it. I respect it, right? Um, everyone says, "Well, Dave Ramsey's already talking about that." That's cool, great. I love Dave. That is my guy, mm -hmm. but he can't reach everybody. Yeah, for sure. And so I'm gonna bring the message to the to to uh, to the conversation, and then you got some other people bringing their message to the conversation. Yeah. Here's the thing: all of us are winning. Yeah. All of us are winning mm -hmm. in a money space. You're winning in a leadership space. Mm -hmm. You got other people. I mean, everyone can win. So yeah. just focus on you and just really make sure that you control your moves and always be willing. And here's the third thing, and I'll shut up. Um, always be willing to learn. Yeah. If you're not willing to learn, 
if, if, you, if you call yourself going on YouTube to see what everyone else is saying and then you're doing that, but you're not taking time to, to learn for yourself and create content from within and really sit up underneath someone to become a better person, you're never going to grow to, to the, the level that you can. I do this every single morning, uh, Monday through Friday. I get up, I download the Word of God, and I intake the world that produces my content. Hmm. So it's like I, I read, I study, I do my Devo. Then I open up the internet. I, I have Google um, um, alerts that sends me, like everyone's talking around debt, money, investing, stuff like that. And I see what the world is talking about. Yep. So between the world and the word, it produces my content. Yep. I don't go to YouTube, I don't go to Instagram. I get my ins inspiration from the word, the world, and I inspire. Yeah, I love that, man. That's, that's the world. No, the word, the world. And, and then I inspire. Yeah, I love it. I love it. it. What you talk about, too, is big about, like, showing up in spite of your moves. Because, I like, I hear people, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've gone through divorce, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've gone through the bad relationships, had loss in the family. But when you look at the big brands, like, listen, uh, my man from Amazon went through a divorce. Sure did. Uh, but I never went to Amazon.com and it was down. because. <laughs> <laughs> It never like, hey man, guy, man. Hey, so, bro, it ain't happening. I, I, hey, we didn't, we didn't upload new products today because I'm going through. No, it's well, like you gotta step up. At, at a certain point, you have to say, man, if I'm going to really be about this life, yes, I have to show up. Like, I, I, you know, I, I literally post something. I was like, listen, you can't, you can't be successful if you keep disappearing when life happens. Come on, man. And so, if you're gonna disappear every time life happens, just don't. Don't be afraid. I mean, don't don't be surprised when all the stuff you want disappear too. Like, yes. you have to show up, and that that. I believe it or not, it's like the toughest part. But I, also, I think that's the gift because when I look at any space, like you know, even people are like man, but there's so many people doing this, there's so many people doing. It. I'm like, yeah, but are they gonna be doing it in two years? Come on, man. A lot of people it, start. <laughs> it, that's the easiest part. Yep, yep. That's yep. the easiest part. Like, shoot, I'm, I'm, I keep restarting my workout journey. I start again yeah. tomorrow. You know, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah. like, okay, cool, Justin. This time we start, we're gonna do a little bit better than the last time. You know what I mean? But it's like what I realized that the easiest part is the beginning. Yes. What's hard is okay. Let me be consistent. Why? Yeah. Because in everything that you do, yeah. life is going to show up. Yeah, yeah. No, and right. what determines how far you go is how you show up when life shows up. Absolutely. And no. so, yeah, I love, I love what you just talked about. And listen, I mean, we'll, we'll probably put in the show notes here. You got an incredible course that you put together. And I, I told you, I think you underpriced it. No, I, I know you underpriced it. No. But <laughs> I like meaning like it should be, it should cost way more. Oh man. Yeah, but but you was like, no, nah, it's, it's it's about I want to I want to give something to be able to literally give nobody no excuse why no they excuse. can't do it. They shouldn't have to go into debt for this. They can just literally get it. And I think that removes all the excuses because like if you can't even get like some of the stuff you're talking about, I'm like, oh you you're not ready, you know, for 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 what what you want is really going to cost. Yeah man. You know, and so um you know shout out for you to putting that together because a lot of people don't put their brand and the things they know inside of something yeah. that's working today. Yeah. Most of the time, people ain't going to teach it until probably five years from now right. when they've already run it, you know? And so I would just say, if you're in a point where you can make an investment, we'll, we'll drop it in the show. Now, what, what is it? What, is, what, do, what do you, what all do you cover? Man, it's just called the Entrepreneurship Blueprint. And thanks for the love, too, on that, man. Yeah. But I, I literally cover how to start from scratch and to build all the way up to at least a six-figure brand. Hmm. Like, how do you build from scratch? Um, um, and you learn everything from literally... How, how do you study content? How do you download from the word of God? Like, what is God assigning you to do? What is mm -hmm. he leading you to do? I don't really get into, like, the whole how to do, you know, um, Google ads and max yeah. out on that. Because, I mean, I think there's a lot of great, there's a lot of opportunities out there for people to teach that, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm all about a scalability brand mm -hmm. and building a true and lasting community, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and you don't cut corners. I don't. Yeah. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, a lot of people try to go wide. I want to go deep. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you get into my brand, we have a whole funnel that brings you in deeper and deeper and deeper uh, because I want you to know that I love you. When a lot of people say, well, I want to get millions of people and just charge them, I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm cool with whatever God allows me to get. I just want to make sure that I serve as many of those people as possible as I can. So I just teach our method of how do we go deep, how do we serve our people, how do we turn them into community members and not just followers. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. So if you was to start over today, like, okay, just leaving a job, brand new entrepreneur, where would you start and why? YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I would do definitely YouTube because I think the internet is the future, yeah. right? And and so uh, YouTube, if you can get on there and be consistent for 12 months, really put in the work, 
within 12 months, you could be making anywhere from 40 to $100,000 in a year from your home. Wow. And then it's like, you know, when you look at YouTube, um, once you start making that kind of money, and let's just say like, all right, cool, you want to step it up. Now you start bringing in brand deals, affiliate deals. You can start doing like your own little mini tours because now you built a community. Uh, but the internet is, it, it's not the future, it's today. Yeah, it's right now. You know, and so we don't have Blockbuster no more. Why? Because of Netflix. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, churches is not the same anymore. And the majority of people want to stream online now because yep. COVID taught us we can do it from online. So for me, if I had to start scratch, if I lost everything today, I'm jumping on the internet, I'm doing a YouTube attached to a podcast, and I'm just going all the way in. Yeah, no, I love it. So you talking about even, I have no followers today. YouTube. Okay. Because here's the thing. Uh, when you really look at it, and I talk about this in my course, right, it's that's the perfect place to start because what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to drop your content and then use tags, SEO. YouTube is the only platform that is Googleable. So if you're searching how to start a dog business and you have a dog business and you have no followers, but you put on your YouTube title, how to start a dog business or how I started a dog business, and then I'm searching how to start a dog business, your stuff will come up. Mm. Now you start building a following, building a tribe, and people don't even know you, but if, if you go on Instagram, I can't Google that. Yeah, no, you can't. It's but, hard to find stuff after you flip and it disappears. It's hard to even find, find it again. again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, I'm going to where I'm Googleable, which mm -hmm. is YouTube. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, I think that's one space potentially that TikTok may be able to overtake Absolutely. Instagram because they do allow you to search. Search. Yep. And so yep. I don't know, Instagram, I don't know if y'all going to ever catch that. Yeah, y'all should, but TikTok <laughs> is already, they've, they've, it's almost like a social media search engine. It is. It's, it's kind of, it Bro. seems like where it's headed, so. And TikTok, I, I mean, I love Instagram, but I love TikTok now. Yeah. My team told me to get on there two months ago. I was like, man, I ain't got time to be trying to dance. I was like, no. Bro, within a matter of, I got, what, 300,000 on Instagram? Within a matter of two months, I'm at 115,000. And I've been on Instagram for 10, 12 years. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a ridiculous space for growth right now. I'm actually mad that I missed it because I was just looking at the dancing. Like, mm. I, like I, I literally got on probably about maybe a month and a half, two months ago, something like that, too. Yep. And I was like, I, I didn't even... So that was a lesson for me that I'm never going to not just discount something by just yep. looking at the surface level because... You look at the Gary V's, you look at some of the other people, I'm like, oh, they, they're they winning, been killing it for a minute because my brother-in-law got three million on there. Wow! And I'm like, how? What? He did? And he just joined last year. Wow! You know, he only got three hundred thousand on Instagram, yeah. but he got three million on TikTok. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like okay, shorts, man. I'm telling you, you want to make money, YouTube, and then the short game is just insane right now. If hmm. you can do something within a matter of one minute to a minute and a half. Drop some fire content within one minute to a minute and a half, you'll you'll definitely get the followers. Wow, hmm. definitely will. That's yeah. one thing I'm doing right now. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, man, I, I appreciate you coming on. One of the things we do, man, you know, every time on the show, man, is you know we like to bless people. You know, what bless I'm saying? people every, every time. Yeah, every time. You know what I'm saying? So, bless people. Gonna bless me? Yeah, but you know, just, you know what I'm saying? Do I do I get like some Jordans or something? Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I know. I know you like golf. Oh, man, you know yo, yo. So listen. Got, you know what I'm saying? You got your uh, perfect practice for hey, your short man, game. Listen, my short game is going to be good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> it's going to be good. I mean, so, that sounded kind of wrong. My short. Yeah. Boss. No, but, man, I man, just, that, you know, man. just, uh, you know, because you obviously, you know, took the time from your life to, yeah, you know, man. you know, come here. So that's just something we do every time. Can we talk about, you know, look, relationships, building relationships. Yeah. I just believe a lot about sowing. Yeah. Good seeds. Put, and especially if you happen to sow some good seeds into good soil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the, the, the return is nah, man. amazing, bro. Appreciate so. you, brother. No, nah, I appreciate you, man. Uh, from Miami with me right hey. now. <laughs> there we go. Where, where can people find you? Where, like, after this, I, I, we know you find got, me on the golf course. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you got I know you got the table. Yeah. Uh on, on uh, YouTube, but anything else you want people to know. Man, all things AnthonyO'Neill.com. They can find me on my social media stuff there, my courses there. Uh, we're just getting into blogs where we're providing more teaching content there. Nice. And then you'll find like all my show and some other shows that we're launching. And so um go to AnthonyO'Neill.com and you'll get everything there, man. Okay. I love it, bro. What's what's next? So, you know, I know we talk about maximizing the single season when you're mm -hmm. not when you're not single no more, what, what is next for the brand? Have you thought about that? 
Man, you know, we we just um we got a couple of TV deals offers right now, man. And so we're we're looking at um maybe doing a reality TV show to help people with their money and relationships. So I'm excited about that. More information to come on that soon. Okay. All right. Light, and this, this is the last thing for real. Last okay. thing for real. All right. All right. I always like to get this this nugget for people because um anytime you run the play, you're gonna have fumbles. Yep. You're gonna have flags, you're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff that happens. And I, I always call it a segment like breakdowns to breakthroughs. Mm. You tell me a situation, whether it's life, personal, whatever, we had a breakdown, but now you look back on it, it was a breakthrough for you and what that lesson was? Yeah, man, you know, I got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I got kicked out of school, my fathers didn't allow me to come back home because I made a stupid decision. And so my mom thought I was living with my girlfriend at the time, which I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I was actually homeless. Wow. And so for a period of my life, um, it was a breakdown. You yeah. know, I was thinking about suicide. I was questioning my relationship with God. And I realized then that the caliber of my future will be determined by the caliber of choices that I made. Yeah. And so that season of my life, while it was a breakdown, it was also my breakthrough to the next season of my life. Wow. Because I had to go to the bottom so I can look up and see where I can go potentially. Yeah. And when I looked up, man, I was like, all right, cool. I haven't made all the right decisions since that time. Um, but I've made better decisions, healthier decisions, and surrounded myself with the right people to where I've been able to break through things that my own family couldn't even break through. Hmm. And so I, I'm grateful for that, man, um, of that season of my life. Do I want to do it again? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, Not again. But, but, but I am grateful for the lessons that I've yeah, learned. Yeah, I love it, man. Well, I appreciate you stopping Yo, through, man. Bro, appreciate you, man. Absolutely, bro. This Absolutely. is gold, man. So listen, y'all, y'all we're here, the Run and Play Show. We told you we're going to give you the best of the best, give you the top plays and gems from their playbook. Y'all just heard from my boy, Anthony O'Neill. Uh, make sure y'all like and subscribe and check out his show, The Table. I'm telling you, it's packed with a lot of knowledge. But listen, y'all, we just gave y'all the play. Now you got to go run it. We'll see you. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run to Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run to play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all.